Hi, good afternoon. My name is Haroon Hassan and welcome to our webinar today from Enterprise rent car Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm a talent acquisition specialist at Enterprise rent car and today we are joined by my colleague Constantina D uh, from Warwick University. Uh, she's a careers and employment employability officer. So uh, what we're doing today, today we'll be discussing the STAR uh, technique and how best to utilize it in an interview. Um, we also be discussing what is a competency, uh, how to answer these sort of questions and why these questions are actually used. So the, the STAR technique is recognized as the best way to answer competency based questions, basically. Uh, and what is a competency? A competency is a behavior or a skill or the ability that is required in a job. Uh, there are a limited number of these, uh, although they can be called different names by different organizations. So, consider, do you know, just want to tell us um, why um, competency, sorry, competency based questions are used? Uh, let's have your thought on what your inputs on it as well, please. Yes, competency based questions are uh, used widely by employers, as you rightly said. And it is a way that we avoid using bias in interviewing when we interview people. So when competency-based questions are asked, we are mainly looking to identify if the candidate has the right skills for the job. This way we avoid the bias, whether they are speaking very nicely or whether people look in certain way or so on. So the main focus is on the skills the candidate has and can demonstrate and evidence. Super, perfect. Thank you very much for that. And yeah, and, and you know, you, you, you've touched on it and it allows the candidate really to just kind of demonstrate the skill set and experience and consider you, you touched on that. And that is exactly what the interviewers actually is looking for. Um, they're looking for real life experience. And uh, I've got a top tip for you here. If you ever apply for Enterprise rent car and you get to the interview stages, we use competency-based questions and we really look out for the STAR method. And one of the reasons is that because we recruit from a whole range of degree backgrounds and competency-based questions allow us to ascertain and extract all that experience and knowledge that you have uh, in, through, through, through our uh, interview process. And what we're looking for really is your experience. And we really want to you to take us on a journey, really. We want you to tell us a, a story and give us lots of detail, lots of information. And ideally provide us with as much evidence as you can and just show us where you've used that skill as well um and you would describe where you've been what you've done the steps you took any successes or any challenges that you've been through um and as you're going through this journey you will actually start to complete what we call the star and this is a very nice little acronym and one definite takeaway from this session is to make sure that you have the STAR method at the back of your mind whenever you're answering these sort of questions. Now, the STAR simply stands for situation, task, action, and result. And this is how you would tackle a competency-based question. So first of all, think about the situation. So what you need to really do is Describe the situation uh, you're involved in. So set the scene. Where are you? What are you doing? Who else is involved? Give us all the background information that leads up to you answering the questions. And you can use an example from your current or previous employers. You can use it from university or college uh, or any personal experience. And personal experiences are, are probably the best really on this. And always use the most appropriate and relevant event. Uh, when you're doing this and all it's just uh, uh, something which is kind of business related or academic related as well um so, so that the is is more professional and it's looking like as if you can actually answer this on, on a level which is kind of relevant to the job doll that you've described and applied for and one of the examples that you should use is one that demonstrate your experience in a very significant way and it is a situation where you need to come kind of come times uh, explain situations which are very complex uh, and very thorough as well and you need to make sure that you give enough detail to the interviewer to understand what was involved um 
in in, in the, the situation that was involved that you're that you're working on. Now that really kind of takes us on to the task. Now the task part needs to be kept very brief but concise, and you need to answer this question in no more than a couple of sentences, really. So, like I said, keep it brief. Describe what the task was, your responsibilities, and any assignments uh, to the situation. Why did you do this, and what was the importance of it? And once again no more than a couple of sentences on this and once you've done the situation and the task you're moving into a very big chunk of the answer and the answer you give is very very important now Constantina I would like to know your thoughts on this section the the action sections so what do you what do you reckon what are your thoughts on this and this is really the bit that the employer or the person who interviews it is really most interested in hearing about. This is the part that should take the most bit of your answer. So we say about 60-70% of your answer should be concentrated on the action part of, um, of the STAR approach. Here we want to hear what specific actions you did what steps you took to resolve the issue or to um, situation or the task. And we want detailed account of the steps you took in a logical way. So we can really follow your thought process and the conclusions you took in order to perform this action. So this is a very, very interesting and meaty part of your answer. Super, thank you very much. Absolutely, this, this is very, very important. And the way Constantina just uh, touched upon that is absolutely, you need to get as much information on this as possible and, and describe um, everything that you've done in, into this really. And this nicely just really takes us on to the final section, which is the result. Now, the, the result section is the second most important part of the answer. And as a successful item proves that your actions were effective. Now, Constantina, what would candidates need to add to this section to ensure that they've answered the question and they've given great closure to the question as well. Exactly. So we've heard about the situation, the tasks, is exactly what you did. But what we really want to hear is the final result. Mm -hmm. So you should have about 15 to 20 percent of your answer concentrating on the result. So we want to hear whether you brought the task to a success, what the um, final uh, feedback from your clients and from your manager's work. We want a demonstra for you to demonstrate exactly what was the final outcome. And of course, your learning. We want to hear the reflection of this experience or so what you've learned, what skills you've developed through this experience. And if you also relate this learning and the skills development to the job you're applying, then it will really give a very good ending of this answer. So result in the STAR approach, result could our can, stay, uh, can be for result, but it could be also for reflection and for relevance. So always remember, provide result with evidence. You can include figures, numbers, any feedback you can give from, as I said, line managers or colleagues or team members, but also reflect on how you moved on, what you've learned and what you might do differently and even better next time. And again, make all this relevant to the job you're applying for. In this way, you tick all the questions, all the right things that you evidence and demonstrate that you have those skills. Super, thank you. A lot of great advice there, uh, Constantine. Thank you very much for that. Now, so as you've now seen the, the overview to the STAR method, um, what, I'm, what me and Constantine are going to work through now is a typical competency-based question and just kind of guide you through how best to answer it using the STAR method. So the question that we have is, tell me about a time when you've used your initiative to resolve a complex problem. What was involved and what actions do you take? So Constantine, I'm going to hand this one over to you. Um, okay, so yeah. we start with the STAR approach. So we start with the S. This is the situation and we are setting the scene. Last year, while working as customer focus manager with ABC Products Limited in London, I successfully implemented a new process which reduced the time taken to process customer refunds from 14 days to two days, saving over 
100,000 pounds annually in ancient time, and again, gaining a 50% uplift in customer approval ratings. Super, thank you very much. So I think you've really touched up on everything. So you, we've touched up on the location, the background, what the actual prerequisite was. Um, in that single opening, the, the interviewer is actually hooked. They know your story, they know what your story is about. But now what they want to know that what you've done and how you're getting to do it. So they're really actually hooked on this part now because you've set the scene really well. You've kind of covered all the bases on here and you've just given them enough so that we can go on to the, the next part of the process, which is the task. So next part is task. And like I said to you earlier on, this should be no more than one or two sentences. Now, I'm going to talk to you about what was done following on from the, the previous slide, which is the the, the setting the scene. So our customer refund process was taking 14 days and was using up excessive amount of agent time and resources. I was tasked with reducing this to two days and the benefit of saving the time. That's all they need to know. They don't need to know any more than this at all. Like I said, keep it short, keep it sharp, keep it concise and move on to the next one. So Constantine, what are your thoughts on the action bit? The action bit, like you said earlier on, is a very important part. So go for it. So this is the part where we spend most describing what we've done. So initially, the pro uh, I initiated the project by firstly clearly defining the objectives and the procedures. Nice and simple. I created a detailed brief that both analyzed the problem and outlined the potential benefit of the newly proposed process. I interviewed the agents involved to gather their input. With all that knowledge, I designed a new process and drafted a brief, which I then forwarded to four software companies who specialize in the system we needed. Once I received the prototype software, I organized a project team who were tasked with implementing this new system. Throughout, I successfully managed the team members, updated and revisited project milestones as necessary, and in the end, delivered a system that performed superbly. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. And like you said earlier on, this is a very, very crucial part of the, the star process. And this is the time right now to really kind of showcase your skill set. So, yeah, absolutely. And the way, Constantina, you did it, you've gone into a lot of detail there, which is, which is perfect. Keep it concise, keep it relevant. And sometimes um, it's very easy to go off on a tangent sometimes and the interview loses interest. So keep it clear, keep it concise and as relevant as much as possible. Now, the last slide, like I said earlier on, is the, 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 the second most important. So you're really kind of sharing your experience and the result. And we always like to see some numbers in projects and this is very important because it demonstrates the scale of the project or the task that you've had. So sometimes you can just really kind of repeat what you said in the in, in setting the scene, but you need to make sure that the answer is punchy and is exciting and it just demonstrates the actions that were completed in a step-by-step -step process. So going back onto the, the, answer, the question that we're working with now, the way I would answer that now is, I was very pleased with the outcome. We reduced the amount of time to process customer refunds. We've gone down from 14 days to two, saved over a hundred thousand pounds. And at the same time, it was great from a customer service point of view. We gained a 50% uplift and the board of directors were pleased as well. So when we put this all together, what we can see here now is that we had the, we, we, we set the scene in essence. So we set up the scene, we told exactly what we were doing where we were, what, the, what the, the, the expectation was, who was involved and why we had to do it. Then we shared the task and that was a very short but sharp process. Very few sentences, we, just, we explained the task. The third one, which was the, the action and Constantina described that in detail and rightly so, it should be in detail. You need to provide as much detail in this section as possible because now is the time for you to demonstrate your knowledge your skill set and your experience. And it also shows, can you handle projects? Can you manage time? And the interview is very, very crucial uh, and wants to know about what, you, what you've actually done. And lastly, it comes on to the results section. And just to summarize the results, 
what you're doing over here really is just sharing the whole experience of the answer, what happened, the end result as well at the same time. And it's very important that you consolidate that really well. And like I said, you can use numbers, you can use figures, facts, and just kind of summarize overall processes. Now, make it interesting. Make it as though that the interviewer is hooked all the way through and they understand what you've done. And it always has to flow as a story. And like I said to you earlier on, you take the interviewer on a journey with you and get them to really kind of immerse themselves into your shoes so that they understand. And the way you'd answer star questions is crucial on, on the outcome of the interview as well. So couple of, one, one of the biggest takeaways I'd say is to make sure that the star method is at the, the back of your mind at every single stage of the, the, when you're answering the interview. And one of the best practices that we normally advise our, our candidates is whenever they ask for some advice is always have a few examples of experiences and pre-hand before the interview. It's very good to design kind of model answers. So generally, for example, if you were coming into enterprise and enterprise is a very, very huge, uh, customer service orientated organization and some of the questions that we'll ask you are actually about customer service as well so it would be great to work out examples and experiences and identify where you provided excellent customer service and utilize the star method in answering those questions so again take the interview on a journey another thing that we're very, very passionate about is sales so sales is a big part of our role it's a big part of our, our, our organization so it'd be great for you to kind of identify opportunities, sorry, experiences in the past where you've been involved in, in, in a sales process. So again, what were you doing? What were you selling? What was, the what was the task? What did you do to achieve that task? And lastly, what was the overall result of that task? So I would really, really recommend that before any interview, identify some of the key competencies, match them against the job description. And, uh, and, and, and kind of just make some star answers, model answers that you can really kind of fall back on during the interview process. Now, the, the last thing we would want to say is that the video, uh, the webinar is available on all of our socials. And, and our socials are developing on a day-by-day on -day basis. And there's a lot of digital content on there. All of our job vacancies are, are, are on there as well, especially on our website. And they're updated on a regular basis. There's so many different pieces of media on there in terms of how to answer questions, how to be successful at assessment centers, um, things like how to prepare CVs and all that sort of stuff. So definitely join us on our socials. They're always updating. It also gives you a good understanding and a good insight into our culture and also what we do at Enterprise rent car and how we create inclusive environments as well. Now, what I'm going to do now is just I'll kind of open the floor up really for any questions that you may have with us and if you've got any questions feel free to fire them away and uh, we'll be here and we can uh, definitely answer these for you what is the most common mistake people make when answering competency-based questions okay perfect okay so one of the the uh, the biggest mistakes that people have is they use the word we now the the key thing here is that the interviewer wants to know about you they want to know about your skill set and what you're doing. That's great. So the key is always use I. So, for example, if I was to put that in, in an interview in, in terms of customer service or tell me about a time when you worked as part of a team, I would say I worked as part of a team. My task was to make sure our customer service score increased from 50 percent to 80 percent. I then spoke to the team. I led morning meetings. I gave, made sure that the atmosphere in the branch was awesome. So I really, really encourage you to use I and me as much as you can. As yeah, well. I, I, will, I will relate to that as well. It is a, a mistake many people make and we, you need to be able to identify your role in the team. You might yeah. not always be the leader, but there is an important role that you've played and we want to hear your story, your contribution to the success of the team. And, and absolutely, because um, the, the, the interview wants to know about you. And, and like you mentioned in the, uh, in the slide of the action, it's all about detail and, and painting that, uh, that picture, really. And yeah, it's crucial. Yeah, 100%, definitely great question there. 
And we have another one. What is the hardest interview question either of you have been asked? <laughs> do you want me to go first, Constantine, or do you want to do it? I, I can't remember now. I think actually probably was where you see yourself in five years' time. It was early on in my career when I wasn't sure where I want to go next, what's the next. So uh, that was a really difficult question. But what I did, although I didn't have a clear career path, I just highlighted the fact that I'm eager to learn and gain experience and then really use my skills to the best to support the team I work with. Perfect. I reckon, Constantine, you know what? I, I, that was probably one of my toughest questions as well. And I actually remember this, and this is going back some years. I've been in enterprise now for about 11 years. And and the way I answered that was pretty similar to, to, similar to yours. I didn't know exactly where I was kind of going, but what I was interested in was my development and what I can add to Enterprise rent car and, and I'm so glad that uh, I'm still here because Enterprise is great at developing you as an individual and also promotion and uh, development and progression is what we really kind of offer really. So yeah, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's a tough one to answer. It's a, it's a very tough one to answer, but as long as you, you mention that you're keen and you want progression and you're looking for personal development and to, to kind of make a positive change, then that, that's pretty much uh, what you can do really. We have more questions. Um, so, uh, Vivian asked, can you use the same story to answer more than one question? Okay. <laughs> I, I, you, you can do, you can do. But see, the thing with that is that it, you need to showcase your experience and your skills and what you really achieved because the interviewer has only got maybe 45 minutes to an hour to, to make a, a decision on the application. And the more information you can give to the interviewer and the more experience you can kind of bring to the front, it puts you in a better position to be successful at that interview. So I'd say can do, but I'd advise against it. And we've all got experiences. We've got experiences from college, university, maybe some work experience, maybe some charity work or voluntary work that you've done. There's all those experience out there. So yeah, definitely go out and, and try getting as much uh, a variety of uh, answers there for yourself. I, I absolutely agree with you, Harun. I will always try to give different examples so I might use once um, more than one skill in one example. Mm -hmm. I will make sure I highlight this and I evidence. But then for the next question, I will think of a completely different example. Uh, it might be work related. It mm -hmm. might be one project. Then I'll use a, a completely different project or extracurricular experience or something you do um, in your volunteering time or even when you travel because actually you gain a lot of good uh, experience uh, when you travel and scale so just try to vary just show yourself as a well-rounded person person who is really very um, diverse and has um, different things to contribute to. absolutely i totally agree you just touched up on, on traveling there there's so many experiences that you can learn uh, through traveling like for example time management managing yourself uh just being independent oh absolutely there's a whole range of uh, experience that you can you can bring out traveling so yeah well, well touched up on that uh got another question here uh, is there any answer to competency-based questions that be, can be perceived as negative by the interviewer um i'll, I'll, I'll have a crack at that so i, I reckon a lot of it's down to the language you use when you're answering these sort of questions. So if you, it's, it's, it goes back to that, that example, is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? So your language and your choice of words are, are very, very important. And when you go into an interview, positivity is the key. Positivity is the key. And you want to portray yourself and show yourself in the best light possible. So is there any uh, any answer that can be perceived as negative? No, or maybe yes, but it's down to you to use the right language, the right choice of words, and really showcase yourself in the best light possible. Yeah, I, I will add here, like go back to the job de description and mm -hmm. uh, try to analyze what skills they're looking for and try to frame, even if there is a weakness or something, you need to show that you've overcome it and you've actually, through overcoming this weakness, you've developed the skills thereafter. So mm -hmm. some people might, uh, I give this example for risk takers. 
So some companies might not want you to be a risk taker. So it has some positive and negative connotations with this. So you need to have done your research of the organization and see whether risk taking is a positive or how people react to that. And then probably frame it in a way that is appealing to your interviewers. Absolutely. That, that's that's really, really well put out there, Constantine. Thank you very much for that. Any other questions? Anything that you'd like to add, Constantina? I, I think we've covered everything in half an hour. That yeah, was... perfect. Thank you so much. Well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much to everyone who's joined us. Constantine, thank you very much uh, for, for joining me here as well. And like I said, the video will be uploaded onto our socials. You can always join us on LinkedIn, Instagram, send us a direct message, and we were more than willing to help you guys out. Thank you very much for your time, yeah. everybody. Have a great day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.